Greetings to you all in the master's name of our dear Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Once again, I welcome all the English congregation for this English worship service. We thank God and we praise God for His faithfulness towards our life. Thanking God for His protection. Whereas God has been faithful in His provision and God has been faithful in His protection towards our life. At this moment, I want before I begin the worship service, I want to make an announcement that from this coming Sunday, October 25th, we will be resuming our uh, worship services. We will be restarting our worship services. Whereas it has been for the past seven months that we are unable to gather as a group in a church. But from this Sunday, 25th of October, we will be regathering in the church. Please note that English service will be starting morning 8 o'clock. It will be just a one hour service. So please take a note and please be a part of this service. Please come on time and be blessed by God. I repeat, on 25th October, our church will be reopening. So please make note and join us for the worship services. I will read a scripture portion and we will start the service with a word of prayer. Make a joyful shout to the Lord, all you lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before His presence with singing. Know that the Lord, He is God. It is He who has made us and not we ourselves. We are His people and the sheep of His pasture. Enter into His gates with thanksgiving and into His courts with praise. Be thankful to Him and bless His name. For the Lord is good, His mercy is everlasting and His truth endures to all generations. Shall we all look to the Lord in prayer. Father, once again we come to Thy throne of grace. And Lord, we thank you and we praise you for all the blessings which we have in your Son and our Savior, Lord Jesus Christ. Lord, thank you for redeeming us. Thank you for calling us as your children, as your people. Thank you for being our Father, our Shepherd, our Creator. Whereas, O oh Lord, this morning we once again acknowledge your wonderful deeds in our life. O oh Lord, at this moment we worship you with truth and in spirit. Lord, we want you to fill us with thy spirit. Lord, we want you to work in us. Lord, we want you to take the preeminence in this worship service. Lord, I do pray and thank you for the viewers. I thank you for their families. Lord, thank you for the way you have been uh, faithful towards them. And Lord, thank you for every provision in their life. At this moment, oh Lord, as we begin this service, Lord, help us to have that thanksgiving heart. Whereas, O oh Lord, we sing and we shout praises unto you, saying, You are our God and we are your people. Lord, once again, guide us, lead us and help us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. At this time, our English choir will lead us in singing. songs of loudest praise. Teach me some melodious sonnet sung by flaming tongues above. Praise the mountain fixed upon it, mount of thy redeeming love. Here I find my greatest treasure Hither by thy help I come, and I hope by thy good pleasure safely to arrive at home. Jesus sought me when a stranger, wandering from the fold of God, he to rescue me from danger. Interposed his precious blood. Oh, to grace, how great a debtor daily I'm constrained to be. Let 
thy goodness like a feather bind my wandering heart to thee prone to wonder god i feel it prone to leave the god i love here's my heart lord take and seal it seal it for thy courts of Once again, we welcome the English congregation to this English worship service. At this moment, I invite you all to please turn your Bibles to Joshua, the book of Joshua, chapter twenty-four, verses fourteen to seventeen. Joshua, chapter twenty-four. I'll be reading from verses fourteen down till seventeen. Now, therefore, fear the Lord, serve Him in sincerity and in truth, and put away the gods which your fathers served on the other side of the river. in the egypt serve the lord and if it seems evil to you to serve the lord choose for yourself this day whom you will serve whether the gods which your fathers served that were on the other side of the river or the gods of the amorites in which in whose land you dwell but as for me and my house we will serve the lord so the people answered and said far be from us that we should forsake the god the lord to serve other gods for the lord our god is he who brought us and our fathers up out of the land of egypt from the house of bondage who did those great signs in our sight and preserved us in all the way that we went and among all the people through whom we passed May God put His divine seal of His infallible word upon our hearts. Let's look to the Lord in prayer. Eternal God, loving and living Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank Thee and we praise Thee for this day and for this time. Once again, O Lord, we come to Thy feet, and Lord, we want You to speak to us. O Lord, as Your words are sweeter than honey, Your word is a two-edged sword, sharper than any two-edged sword, O Lord. Lord, at this moment, O Master, we want you to speak to us. We want you to work in us. O Lord, I pray for the hearers. Lord, you know their hearts. You know their needs. O Lord, I pray that Master, you would meet them in a special way. O Lord, I pray that Master, you would speak to them. O Lord, I pray that Master, may the work of the Holy Spirit be manifested in our midst. O Lord, I pray that Lord, those who are seeking answers for their life. I pray that Master, you would speak to them, and Lord, help them to understand the divine purpose for their life. At this moment, O oh Lord, I do pray for this feeble preacher. Lord, bless my feeble instrumentality and use me for Thy glory. O oh Lord, we bring ourselves at Thy feet, and Lord, we want You to bless us. O oh Lord, I plead the blessed power of the Pentecost, whereas O oh Lord, I can be a bold in my speech. Clear in my speech, O Lord, Lord, I I plead for Thy action. Once again, O Master, we surrender ourselves. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. The book of Joshua is speaking about God's power. The book of Joshua is all about conquering the land. The book of Joshua it also speaks that how God stood for His people. My friends, when we study the book of Joshua we see two things my friends two prime things that we need to understand one is the promise and the second one is a work i repeat one is the promise and the second one is the work my friend you know we see the promise of god in the life of israelites you know god has promised these israelites a land which was promised to abraham isaac jacob And you know now when we when we when we study the book of Joshua in the first chapter we see the people of Israel you know they they made the tents just beside Jordan and they were about to possess the promised land and we see God speaking to Joshua and God anointing Joshua as the leader for his people and we see that the promise of God was spoken. and the promise of god was illuminated 
to Joshua and his people, my friends. You know, these people were about to possess the land. That was the promise of God. That God has promised their ancestors that He is going to give them the, give them the land. And now we also see the works, my friends. The work of God and the work of man. You know, God was about to perform. You know, God was about to perform. And He performed His mighty acts in the life of His likes, my friends. But you know, there was also a personal effort which has to be put by these people of Israelites, my friends. Let me tell you, just sitting, just sitting there at Jordan, they cannot conquer the promised land. You know, they cannot conquer the promised land. And that's the lesson we learn from the book of Joshua, my friends. You know, in our lives, you know, we have the promises of God. You know, if you are still sitting at that Jordan, if we, are, if we are still sitting near the Jordan, you know, we cannot, we cannot possess the promise of God, my friends. You know, we need to stand, we need to work, we need to walk, whereas God has promised us in all our works, He shall be there with us. And in all our works, God will lead us. In, in order to possess this promise, you know, we need to work, my friends. We need to act. And we see the same thing in the life of Israelites. You know, just sitting over there near the Jordan, they would have never or ever would possess that promised land. This moment, my friends, in our personal life, we might have several promises from the Word of God. You know, of course, salvation is only on the merits of our Savior. And salvation is only the work of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And it is received by faith through grace of Lord Jesus Christ, my friends. But you know, if we want to continue in our spiritual life, we need to act, my friends. If we want that rewards from God, if we want that promised land, which is heaven for us, you know, we need to work, my friends. We need to work those righteous deeds. That's why I often say, I often say this, that we are not saved by good works. We are not saved by good works, but we are saved to do good works, my friends. We are saved to do good works. And when we read the book of Joshua, you know, we see the hand of God was there with this leader who was unctioned by God, who was led by God. And we see God through Joshua who have done several uh, wonders and God has performed great things through this man, my friends. You know, the people of Israel have seen and they have witnessed the power of God. You know, I love, I love the verse which is, uh, which is written in Joshua chapter 23. Uh, Joshua chapter 23. You know, it says, you know, it says uh, in 23 verse number 9, it says, For the Lord uh, for, for the Lord has driven out from before you great and strong nations, but has for you no one has been able to stand against you to this day. You know, we see God has dri driven out God has cast out all those strong nations because God stood on their behalf. This moment, my friends, you know, in our spiritual aspect, God has taken away. God has put it. Uh, God has put a uh, you know put a full stop for the wrath of God and the penalty of sin in Jesus Christ. You know, sin was powerful, and you know, sin is powerful. And you know, we see that God has saved us from that penalty of sin. This moment, you know, we need to understand that when God has saved us, when God has worked in our life, He expects that we need to stand for Him. We need to walk in His ways. This moment, I want to entitle my sermon as Standing for the Things of God. Standing for the Things of God. You know, the, the scripture passage which we have read in Joshua chapter 24, verses 14 to 17. We see Joshua is, he is making an open proclamation. He's saying, hey look, you people of Israel, 
that you know as you know you serve whomever you want but as for me and my family we will serve the lord we will serve the lord you know my friends there was a firm decision and we see this man of god standing for the things of god this moment my friends i want to read this quotation uh, which is said by a great man of god you know it says uh, it says it is said that a wise man who stands firm in a is a statesman statesman you know a wise it is said that a wise man who stands firm is a statesman and a foolish man who stands firm is a disaster a foolish man who stands firm is a disaster and as as believers as christian apostle paul has given us this <coughs> he has given us this a uh, 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 charge that we need to stand firm for the purpose of god when we read first corinthians chapter 15 verse 58 it says first corinthians chapter 15 verse 58 it says therefore my beloved brethren be steadfast immovable always abounding in the work of the lord knowing that your labor is not in vain in the lord amen you know paul is Uh, reminding the Corinthian believers that they need to stand for, they need to stand firm, they need to be immovable, and you know they must be always abounding in the works of the Lord. And also he says that be steadfast, be loyal. This moment, my friends, we need to be firm. We need to be loyal to our God. We must be loyal to our Savior who has saved us from the penalty of sin. and you know one day he will save us from the presence of sin as we see Joshua chapter 24 verses 14 to 15 you know it takes courage to stand for the things of god in a godless world my friends you know there was a possibility and there was a danger for people of israel because after the death of Joshua there is a possibility that they would adopt the customs and they would adopt the system of the surrounding nations and those nations would influence their lifestyle those nations would change their god this moment my friends you know Joshua Joshua made this statement in those uh, you know in those circumstances that he would stand firm for god that's why we see you know it, it needs courage to stand for god to stand for the things of god in a godless age my friends you know where we 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 live in an age you know where people seek pleasure my friends you know they are pleasure seekers my friends you know when we when when we switch on to tv you know when we see that you know you know we we see the all the crime which is going on and we see the society and the rules and the way they work you know everything is corrupted but you know God wants us to be faithful my friends God wants us immovable in our Christian walk amen he wants us to be steadfast in our Christian walk my friends you know my friends let me tell you to stand firm in God in to stand firm for God it needs courage my friends it needs courage you know we see you know, the young people Daniel Shadrach Meshach Abednego you know they stood firm for the living god you know i said that they would not defile themselves by eating this king's portion not only that you know when we the when king nebuchadnezzar made that huge image you know they did not yield they did not bend down to that uh, idol my friends and we see you know they knew that you know uh, obeying not the commandment of king would cost them their life but you know we see they were standing firm and they were courageous my friends that's what we see in Joshua's life you know he said you know you choose whomever you want to you go wherever you want to go you adopt whatever custom you want to adopt but as for me and my house we will serve the lord we will serve the lord you know, that's the statement of Joshua my friends you know he was standing for the things of god you know we need people we need christians in this age in this era that they will stand for the living god my friends the people in joshua's days were being influenced by the wicked nations 
around them. You know, we see in our, in our, in our, in our present generation, in this present era, you know, people can be easily influenced with the present custom, my friends. People can be easily, easily influenced by the system of the world, my friends. You know, it's all about lust. It's all about pleasure. You know, we, we, we live in a nation. We live in a nation where people consider everything as God. But let me tell you, let me tell you, you know, we need to stand firm for God. We need to stand firm for God. Let me tell you, my friends, that, you know, there is a possibility, there is a possibility to go and fall in the trap of Satan when we fail to follow the word of God. When we fail to follow, when we fail to spend time in the presence of God, my friends, Joshua knew the danger this brought to the people of God and to his own family, my friends. Joshua was committed to, to lead his family in the God's way. You know, this moment, my friends, we need to understand, you know, we need to understand that Joshua was taking care of his family and, you know, he was so firm and he was making sure that his family would not be influenced. His family, as for his family, they will not adopt the culture of the other nations, my friends. This moment, you know, we need to understand the truth. You know, the text which we have read is very familiar, my friends. Perhaps we have, we might have read this text on several occasions. We might have heard hundreds of sermons. But this moment, my friends, we need to understand some of the prime truth. And I want to put them before you. You know, what does it mean when we say we are standing for the things of God? You know, what does it mean in the life of Joshua? You know, what can we see in these verses in chapter 24 of book of Joshua, verses 14 to 17? What are we looking into in the life of Joshua? The very first thing, my friends, I want you to understand is the decision of Joshua. It is the decision of Joshua, my friends. You know, what is the decision? You know, what is this decision? It's a personal decision, my friends. It is a personal decision. It all matters it all begins with our proposal, with our decision, my friends. You know, that's why we see in the, in the first psalm, whereas the psalmist says that blessed is a man who walk not in the counsel of the wicked, nor stands in the ways of the evil one. This moment, my friends, you know, we need to understand that it all matters. It all begins with our decision, my friends. And in this passage, we see the decision of Joshua. What is that decision? In verse number 15 of Joshua chapter 24, it says, And if it seems evil to you to serve the Lord, choose for yourself this day whom you will serve, whether the gods which your fathers served that were on the other side of the river, or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you dwell. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. It is not only a personal decision, it is also a practical decision, my friends. A practical decision we see in this passage. What is that decision? What is that practical decision? You know, we see, you know, this practical decision is based upon the past blessings of God. You know, this practical decision is based upon the past blessings of God. In verse number 13, we see that I have given you the land for which you did not labor and the cities which you did not build and you dwell in them. You eat of the wine yards and olive groves which you did not plant. You know, we see, you know, it was all about God's blessing in their life. The decision has to uh, you know, they have to make a decision considering the blessings of God in their life, looking back on the things what God has done in their lives, my friends. In verse number 17, we see, For the Lord our God is He who brought us and our fathers out of the land of Egypt from the house of the bondage, who did those great signs in our sides. You know, the people reacted. And, you know, we see... 
uh, that the way God has worked in their life. In verse number 18 we see, And the Lord drove out from before us all the people, including the Amorites, who dwell in the land, who also will serve, uh, we also will serve the Lord. He is our God. You know, we see it is based upon the past blessing. It is the decision, the practical decision of Joshua is not only based on the past blessing, but it is based upon the folly of the past decision of Israel. You know, it says it is a it is a folly of the past decision of Israel. In verse number 14 and 15, it says, Now therefore fear the Lord, serve him in sincerity, in truth, and put away the gods which your fathers served on the other side of the river and in Egypt serve the Lord. You know, we see that's the, the, the commandment and that's the commission, that the, that's the call of Joshua, my friends, that, you know, the decision of Joshua was completely based on the folly of the past decision of Israel. You know, they were serving the gods on the other side of the river, which were ungodly, which were God, you know, they were gods, but there was no life in them. But Joshua is saying, serve the living God, the God who brought them out of bondage and the God who has given them a promised line. Not only that, my friends, it is based upon the consequences of denying God. You know, this decision is also based upon the consequences of denying God, my friends. It is a dangerous thing. It is a dangerous thing when we deny the living God. In verse number 20, it says, If you forsake the Lord and serve forging gods, then He will turn and do you harm and consume you after He has done you good. You know, we see the God who has done so good. You know, Joshua is giving them a caution that if you turn away from the Lord, God is going to consume them. God is going to consume them. You know, we see that his decision was a consequence, it was based on the consequences of the past when they denied the living God, my friends. This moment, you know, we need to understand, we must be firm in our decision and we need to understand and that we need to observe at the danger of denying God, my friends. The danger of denying God. You know, when we see the people of you know, the men and women in the Bible, you know, when they denied God, you know, there was a severe consequences. There was a, the wrath of God was proclaimed upon the God's people. At this moment, my friends, we need to understand that it is a dangerous thing. It is a dangerous thing when we deny the living God. Not only that, my friends, the second thing I want you to notice is the declaration of the Joshua. The first thing we have seen the decision of Joshua and the second thing is the declaration of Joshua and in verse number 1 it says then Joshua gathered all the tribes of Israel to Sikkim and called the elders of Israel for their heads for their judges and for their officers and they presented themselves before God you know we see that Joshua has gathered the people of Israel and there is a the, the declaration of uh, Joshua it is open my friends it is a public dis declaration that, that he called the people in the, in the climax of Joshua he gathered all the tribes and, you know he's saying and he's pronouncing that you know that they need to serve the living God in Matthew's gospel chapter 8 verse 38 it says that Lord Jesus Christ is saying that whosoever therefore shall be ashamed of me and of my words in, <coughs> in this adulterous and sinful generation of him also shall the son of man be ashamed when he cometh in the glory of his father with the holy angels. You know my friends, the public declaration of Joshua, he was not ashamed my friends in accepting God. He was not ashamed in proclaiming the word of God. You know, in, he was not ashamed in presenting the living God. And he was not scared of reminding them about the consequences from God when they deny 
the living God, my friends. You know, we see that, you know, it was a public declaration. Not only that, in Matthew's Gospel, chapter 32, uh, chapter 10, verses 32 to, 30, 32 to 33, we see Lord Jesus Christ, He says, Who, Whosoever therefore shall confess me before men, him I will confess also before my Father which is in heaven. But whosoever shall deny me before men, him will I also deny before Father which is in heaven. You know, Lord Jesus Christ is saying that the public this declaration of Lord, the, of Joshua, you know, it, it was he was not scared, he was not feeling ashamed in calling the people to accept God. And you know, we see Lord Jesus Christ is also saying the same thing to his disciple that we need not be ashamed in accepting Lord Jesus Christ as our personal Savior, my friends. You know. When we go to YouTube or if you are on social media, you know, when we look at the, uh, the Facebook, you know, we see the persecution which is going on in Uttar Pradesh, in Chhatkhand, in Chhattisgarh, you know, we see in Bihar, in Rajasthan, you know, there are people every Sunday who are being persecuted, my friends. There are people who have been dragged out from the churches and who are people who have been brutally killed. There are people who have been insulted, you know, in a couple of days back I was watching a video, you know, it was in the Rajasthan, you know, you know, the people, they bought a lady over there and you know, they didn't have any respect for that lady. They started beating her, they started abusing her, my friends. This moment, my friends, we have a great challenge as Christians, you know, we need, we have a challenge to stand for the living God. You know, things are going to be different. You know, things are going to be more disastrous. We need people who would confess Lord Jesus Christ as their personal Savior. You know, the people who will not be ashamed in accepting the Lord. Praise God for those who have been persecuted, my friends. To them, God is going to give them the reward for their labor. Blessed are those who have been persecuted. That's what Lord Jesus Christ said on his sermon, sermon, of, our sermon on Mount. This moment, you know, we need to understand that, you know, we need to have a public declaration when we stand for the Lord. And not only that, my friends, we see that the purpose of that declaration in verse number 1 of Joshua chapter 24, we see the purpose of that declaration Joshua's witness to the people and not only that Joshua's warning to the people my friends Joshua's warning to the people in verse number 23 of <coughs> book of Joshua verse 23 it says now therefore he said put away the forging gods which are among you and incline your heart to the Lord God of Israel you know we see Joshua's warning to his people to put away those forging gods and come and yield, incline your heart to the living God. My friends, at this moment, what are those idols which are there in your heart? What are those idols which are still, you know, you, you know, which are still in that secret room in your of your life? This moment, you know, we need to remove those idols, my friends. We need to come out firmly standing for the living God. You know, we need young people who would remove those idols from their heart, who would remove those secret relationships from their life, who would come uh, with a boldness, who would come with the with, with who would come before the Lord uh, with, with a fair heart, with a faithful heart, who will incline their ear, who will incline their heart for the purpose of God. This moment, my friends, we need to understand Joshua's warning for his people. Not only that, the purpose of this declaration, what we see in verse number 4, Joshua's will for his family. In verse number 15, he says, you know, he says in the last phrase of verse number 15, he says, but as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. You know, he was giving them, giving public a declaration and you know he was say, also saying the will for 
his family my friends the will for his family this moment you know we need to be, we need to have that purpose of our declaration you know the purpose for living for the lord you know when we say you know our our faith doesn't stop at the church our faith doesn't stop at the baptism tank my friends but you know our faith has must have a purpose you know our faith must be a continual process every day we need to exercise in the word of god that we need to that that we need to strive for the lord that's what we see apostle paul saying to timothy that you know bodily exercise profiteth little bodily exercise profiteth little but you know godliness brings great gain amen godliness brings great gain my friends we need to have such kind of purpose we need to have such kind of purpose in our declaration my friends that we practice godliness rather than worldliness i repeat we practice godliness rather than worldliness third thing and finally we see the determination of joshua we have seen the decision of joshua we have seen the declaration of joshua third thing is the determination of joshua my friends you know what is his determination joshua's determination is to be separated from the idols you know you need to set aside from the idols you know this moment my friends when we are standing for god we need to set aside from those idols my friends idol which lead us to sin idol which will make us an enemy to god idols which will bring curse to our personal and family life this moment my friends we need to set apart from those idols you know i may not know that idol but you know in your heart what is that idol which is dragging you back you know which is calling you back which is inviting you to sin again and again this moment my friends we need to separate ourselves from the idols we need to separate ourselves from the idols my friends let me tell you you know when you when you place a magnet before an iron you know when you when you place a magnet before an iron you know we cannot say that the magnet will not get attached or the magnet will not get attracted to the iron you know unless and until the magnet is set far from that iron you know the magnet is set up away from that iron piece you know it cannot connect itself to the iron this moment my friends we need to understand this truth that you know you cannot have sin in your life and say that sin can't attract me you know you know you you know you cannot say this that you have sin in your life and you say that you know sin can't entice me let me tell you that sin will lead you unto death just as the magnet is attracted and we see uh, that you know that magnet is attracted in a way that it will got it will get stuck with that iron you know it it is it is in a fraction of second in the same way my friends sin is so attractive this moment you know we need to remove those idols from our life we need to set apart ourselves from those attractions from our lives my friends not only that you know joshua's service to the lord you know joshua's de- determination is to serve the lord his de- determination is to serve the only god this moment my friends that should be our determination our, our, our savior lord jesus christ has said that no master can serve in i'm sorry no servant can serve two masters no servant can serve two masters no one can serve two masters my friends this moment you know our service should be for the living god our service should be for the god who is able to conquer all our battles in our life 
this moment, you know, we need to have such determination as Joshua had. Not only that, we see Joshua's submission to God. You know, he submitted himself to God, my friends. This moment, you know, we need to have such kind of heart, my friends, that our hearts, our mind, our life is reserved only for the living God. That we submit ourselves, that we present our bodies as a living sacrifice for His glory. Amen. This moment, my friends, we need to understand this truth that Joshua has a determination to submit himself to the Lord. You know, how many of us as Christians, we have this determination that we present our body holy and sanctified in the presence of the Lord. You know, that should be our goal, my friends. You know, we see that, you know, we need the commandment of God in our life. We need the authority and the Lordship of our Lord Jesus Christ. And we need to stand for the things of God. And, you know, we need to walk in the ways of the Lord. You know, we see that's the firm decision of standing for the Lord. Standing for the things of God, my friends. Joshua was standing only and one and only for the living God. Standing for the things of God. For what you are standing, Christian, this moment. For what you are looking for. To whom you are serving. For what you are submitted to. This moment, my friends, I want you to understand. Just like Joshua, we need to surrender our life. And we need to stand for the things of God. As I have said in the beginning, you know, it requires courage to stand for God in a godless world. Shall we all close our eyes and look to the Lord in prayer? Eternal God, loving and living Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you and we praise you for thy word. Oh Lord, it is so true that Lord, we need courage to stand for you. Help us to have that decision which Joshua had in his life and you know he was as Lord he is firm in his decision help us to be firm and fixed to our decisions in you Lord help us to have the determination to live for you, for thy glory Lord help us to present our bodies our families uh, to you as a gift and Lord help us to serve only you in our life Lord help us to have that declaration that we belong to you. Lord, remembering the past blessings. Remembering the past things which thou hast performed in our life. Lord, help us to be faithful, O Master. Once again, O Lord, bless the hearers. Meet them in a special way. Lord, you know their needs. You know their wants. I pray that, Master, you would help them to overcome every temptation. And help them to stand for your glory. Once again, O Lord, we thank you and we praise you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Now the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, love of the Father and the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit, Rest and abide with us both now and forever. Amen. Thank you. God bless you all.